The deepest principle of human nature is the craving to be appreciated. A belief shared by American philosopher William James. Can appreciation really fuel great work? To discover its power through transforming culture, would like to invite on stage Mr. Kevin Ames, Director O.C. Tanner Institute. You know that the word culture, interestingly, was called the business term of 2014 by Merriam-Webster.com. Isn't that interesting? The business term of 2014. The reason they called it that, they saw an uptick of 15% on searches for the word culture in 2014. 100 million a month. That tells me that companies, people, organizations don't know what culture is and they're looking on Google to find out. Research in positive psychology for the last 20 years plus suggests that a pursuit of success has not had much impact on happiness for individuals. Conversely, they have discovered that happiness is what impacts success. It has a greater impact on success than success does on happiness. If that's true, what kind of a culture should we be focused on inside of our organization? Maybe a culture where people are happy. Maybe an environment that does exactly what we're talking about today, which is inspire excellence. So my topic today really comes from what we do at our particular organization at OC Tanner. As you take a look at a place to work, would you be interested in a place that has a culture of appreciation and performance, a vibrant community of people that love what they do, love who they do it with, love who they do it for? It's an ideal world, isn't it? How often does it happen in the real world? Hardly at all. Hardly at all. An interesting dynamic, isn't it? And our, our goal entirely is to, is to set out to change that. Success is hard to define for many organizations beyond financial. Profitability and growth is, is something that we pursue. It's necessary. Every healthy organization must have that. But now we're being pushed by you young people to expand that definition to include environmental success. Are we a green company? Are we aware of our footprint on the planet? We're being pushed to have social success, aren't we? What is our contribution to our local and global communities. Are we responsible there? So when we define success as all these other things, I'm going to suggest to you that it comes to us through only one, and that is this concept of cultural success. Happy. There's a couple of kinds of organizations in the world. There's the Steve Jobs type organization. Innovates like nobody's business, brought us products that we didn't even know we wanted, and rose to the top of the food chain with some incredibly miserable people producing the body of that work. Would you agree? The other side of that spectrum would be what Mr. Branson does at Virgin, right? So Richard Branson is a friend of ours and a client, and what's interesting about him is he's passionate about people first. He's actually passionate about having fun. I think that's kind of a cool idea too, don't you? So when I see my leader as the sponsor and the model and the defender of the mission, I'm pretty sure that they're serious about these values they've articulated, and pretty sure that they're serious about building a culture where I have the opportunity to both succeed and be happy with my life and have work-life integration. Everywhere I go in the world, I find that companies and people have two kinds of values going on. The first is called values of expression. The second is called values of behavior. And more often than not, they do not align. How many of you want to lead a healthy, energetic lifestyle? Raise your hand. A healthy, energetic lifestyle. If I follow you around for two weeks and I video your life 24 hours a day, will I see evidence of that? Will I find out that you're eating right and exercising, sleeping, managing stress, having meaningful conversation with family and friends, and a deep and rich life? Or will I find that you just talk about wanting a healthy, energetic lifestyle, but your behaviors are not delivering on that? Organizations are doing that all the time. People are number one. Our customers are number one. Our employees are number one. Everybody's number one. And it's all about values of expression, values of behavior. We've got to work on that, because what we say has to be what we do. Or you're not going to want to work at that place very long, and you're going to keep changing until you find one. So we've got to start building great places where great things can happen inside of organizations, and that's people-centric. Two things we've got to focus on, shared values, common direction. What happens when everybody has shared values? Do I have to worry about values anymore? I just trust that everything's going to be like I want it to be, right? Because the values are all the same, so the decisions will be mostly the same. 
Now, I can focus on hiring people to match that culture, and I'm in good shape. Then a common direction. Why? People need to know where they're going. Research is clear. About 7 out of 10 customers stop buying from companies because they have one experience with an indifferent employee. What if you have more than one? You're in trouble. Right? But we could choose to have it the other way. But we've got to connect people to this strategy, to the mission statement. Why? Because it's foundational. I wonder if we can't impact motivation very much because it's intrinsic. But I can inspire it. And if I'm effective at inspiring it, then people will turn on their own motivation. Make sense to you? My job is to inspire it. Give them a reason to. Give them a vision. Something greater than themselves that they want to connect to. Great work, as we discovered in the research, turned out to be the kind of work that makes a difference people love. The kind of work that makes a difference people love. So when someone produces that work and delivers it, the person that receives it loves the difference. What kind of person produces great work? Only one kind. They're called engaged employees. Have you ever heard of this term? It's kind of new. Employee engagement. What? You've heard of it? Somebody must have announced it earlier. It's been around for millions of years, if that's even possible. And it's a tired term, and it's wore out, and no one can define it, and no one can tell us what the percentages are. And we chase it with surveys that tell us very little, if anything at all. But we can observe it really easily. It's right there in the behavior. It can be seen. But let me suggest that the reason organizations are not achieving it is because they're trying to drive it, and they think that it's an organizational destination. So let me reframe that for you. I think what we've discovered is that it is not, in fact, an organizational destination, but rather the decision that one individual makes at a time. The new employee is onboarded until they make a decision to engage with the mission, vision, values of the organization and to produce great work on its behalf, or they choose not to engage. And more often than not, they choose not to engage, and they stay. All you can do is build an environment that is inspirational and conducive to causing people to choose to engage with your organization. Engage in what? Producing great work and making a difference. Right? What you're going to have to do is pay attention to what human beings naturally want. They want meaning in their life. They want social connection to people in teams to produce great work. They want to connect to that noble cause. But we don't even think about that at organizations these days. The third leading influencer globally of a choice to engage is pride in the organization and the symbol that represents it. And what connects them to that, and that's a feeling, what connects them to that is alignment of their work to the noble cause. They can see the connection. They understand it, right? The leading influencer of a choice to engage, however, is a sense of opportunity and a sense of well-being. A sense of opportunity to do what? Four things, according to Frederick Hertzberg, leading motivation researcher for the last 50 years. He suggested that money does not motivate people, but these four things in a professional environment will. The opportunity to learn. That makes sense. Master my craft. Cross-train. Second, the opportunity to grow in responsibility. We didn't say get promoted. We said grow in responsibility, right? I have, can take on greater assignments and do other things. Third is about well-being, though. Third is the opportunity to contribute to other people. That's a natural need for human beings as well. Once we're okay, we start to have this craving to participate in the society and contribute to others. And the fourth thing was to be recognized for my achievement. Not recognized because I need attention. And leaders miss this. Leaders, tell, leaders will tell me all the time, we don't need to do this recognition stuff. These needy people that just want attention all the time. These guys miss the boat. That's not what this is about. This is because a human being needs to be validated. They're not saying recognize me. They're saying recognize my work. The first definition of appreciation is the expression of approval or gratitude. It's the expression of it. It completes the great work. See, when I do a piece of great work, it's satisfying to me, but I'm not sure it's great until you validate it, until someone validates that, in fact, it's that way. Second meaning. This is a sensitive awareness or understanding. This is emotional intelligence. I start to recognize that recognition and appreciation is not about competition and comparison. It is about understanding, being a connoisseur of people and great work. I understand the work an individual does compared to their potential only, not compared to their teammates. That you get the third definition, which is a rise in value. The kind of rise like the tide that raises all boats. 
The person that gives the moment of recognition is blessed by it, as is the recipient. But so are those that observe the moment and see what great work looks and feels like.